one advantage of creating the YouTube channel very early in YouTube's lifetime is that I found some very big YouTubers when they were not big yet. So for example, I found Rusty Cage or better met my friend told me about him and he was stuck at like 600, 700 subscribers for two or three years because one of his videos went viral, the knife game song. And I just checked yesterday, he has 750,000 subscribers now, 750,000. I shouted him out actually because I thought he deserved more on, uh, I shouted him out uh, when he had 650 subscribers. And I was like, how, how does he not get more subscribers? He's such a good musician. Now he has 750,000. Um, I found Andrew Foy. He's a guitar player. When he, he, he had like 300 subscribers, I think. And he actually watched my videos at the times and subscri subscribed to my channel. Now he also has like 750,000 subscribers. But he totally deserves it because he's like really good, really good. One of my first subscribers actually was Jordan Jensen. He has now 300 or 400,000 subscribers. And um, he's a really good singer, musician, guitarist, pianist from Australia. He was actually one of the first 10 people who subscribed to my channel. I know this because I mentioned him in a video that is called um, 10 subscriber tribute or something like this. That's a video that's in my other video playlist. And, and I talk about my first 10 subscribers and Jordan Jensen was one of them. Thomas from Norway, who's probably watching this right now, um, was one of my other first 10 subscribers. He's probably the most active to still up to this day. He comments on every video I made and that for now seven or eight years. So Thomas, thank you very much for your loyalty. And I actually found um, someone in 2008, I think, before I started making videos, I subscribed to Kid Raul. Um, he had like 20,000 subscribers, I think. He later became famous as Justin Bieber. Um, so yeah, I found him before he recorded this baby baby stuff and yeah, blew off. I don't even know how many subscribers he has now because he's not really considered a YouTuber anymore. He was back then, but not anymore. And um, I uh, found actually Casper Lee when we were still living in South Africa. And I subscribed to him when he had some 50 subscribers, 50 subscribers. I think now he has 10 million. I found him at 50 subscribers. He was replying to my comments like all the time. I had already been subscribed to his old channel, which a lot of people do not know. Casper Lee's old channel had like a thousand subscribers um, before he created his Casper channel. I, I subscribed to Troy Sivan when uh, he had 4,000, three, 4,000 subscribers. And he, um, he replied to comments at that time. And he sent me a CD. Troy Sivan sent me this EP. I think it was 2010. I don't, does it say? So the EP, oh, it was earlier. EP was recorded in 2007. So I guess I, uh, yeah, I think he sent it to me 2009-ish, 2010, 2000, 2009, yeah. And he even wrote a message on it, like, Matthias, that's my name, enjoy Troy. And you cannot really get this EP anymore. And speaking of uh, CDs I got from YouTubers, I found, <laughs> found some others. Um, I was Jackson Perkins. Jackson Perkins 
does not really make YouTube anymore, but he is a great musician. He made good songs, really good music. So, and I always like to um, support young musicians on YouTube um, or unknown musicians in general. So I bought his EP, Jackson Perkins, Waves of Light, and I have a digital album or EP that he uploaded in 2010, I think. So this is from later. Um, as I said, Rusty Cage. I bought two albums, I think, where's the other one? Rusty Cage. Um, yeah, I bought them when he was not famous. Um, the same for Holly Kirby. Holly Kirby, she she is not on, really on YouTube anymore. Um, st still, or again, with a personal message to Matthias. That's me. Very best wishes, Holly. Holly Kirby is like really, really, really good. And um, kind of sad that she apparently never really made it in the music industry because this is from 2010 or 11. And I never heard anything from her anymore. Eric? Eric, okay, that's a topic that I skipped actually. Colab channels. Um, Colab channels were pretty popular at that time. Like everybody was in some kind of uh, Colab channel. There were there were pretty famous Colab channels, and there were the one I was in. <laughs> and the funny thing is that it was uh, uh, a Colab channel with Ken and with George. They are both one of my best friends now. And and there was another collab channel for musicians musicians um, that was run by Matt, who is one of my best friends now. And in this collab channel, follow the musicians, actually one of the best, no, the best collab channel that ever existed. And it run, it ran for, I think, two years which is pretty long for call-up channels. Normally they were like two, three months. So this was like more than two years. And one of the guys who was in this call-up channel, if you don't know what a call-up channel is, there's a bunch of people uploading to the same channel, usually on, on special days. So one guy is Monday, one guy is Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, 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 and so on. Um, so I remember actually another YouTube uh, caller channel where I found Griffin Kirby, not related to Holly Kirby, I think. Griffin, Griffin, if you're watching this, are you related to Holly Kirby? But I doubt she's from England. Yeah, Griffin Kirby was on this uh, Vlog Vault YouTube collab channel. And um, I we never really got out of touch we never really talked that much but now we are kind of friends on social media so griffin hi i mentioned you <laughs> and i uh, hope to talk to you soon so back to the follow the musicians eric bradford from sweden um i think he now lives in japan and doesn't really make music anymore at least not publicly or on youtube the one that i just got uh, ben Pryor. He released it last month. If you're like into good old rock and roll music, he's the man. Shane Fox, that's my friend Matt that I mentioned several times. Um, the last memories of my youth. Excellent, excellent EP. And again with a personal message, message that I will not show you. Um, and Luke, Jacks, Luke Paul Jackson. He was one of the first people I subscribed to, I think. He's, uh, that's an EP, Run and Hide, five songs. And uh, he's not really into into the music business. Um, I follow him on Instagram. And so I see that he's always playing at festivals and making like pretty big concerts. Um, so he, he found his way in, in the music 
business. So that's good because he is good. These were the YouTubers that I found very early in their career. Some YouTubers found me very early in my <laughs> career. Um, so it was Jordan Jensen, as I told you, Thomas from Norway that I told you about. And of course, um, three of my four best friends, Ken, George and Matt. I found them all because of YouTube and I'm so grateful for this. This is actually the biggest reason why I love YouTube because you can really make friends for life, not just online friends, friends or social media friends. You can make friends for life. And I made four friends for life via the internet. Three of them from YouTube, Ken, George and Matt. And then there's Zachary, um, who I found somewhere else and not on YouTube. Um, then there are people that I physically met um, that I knew from from YouTube. First of all, my three friends that I mentioned, Matt, George and Ken. Then I met Kieran Bentley um, at Summer in the City 2015. He used to um, upload regularly and he's a great musician. Um, but now he's like a film student or something, I think. So I, he doesn't really post anything on YouTube anymore, but I met him and I met Perplexia, who you might see in the comments sometimes or all the times. Um, and he's probably watching right now. So hi, it was a pleasure to meet you. Let's move on to the last segment of this video. Um, I ask people for questions. Um, Zachary, who I mentioned earlier, asks, what instrument do you want to learn? 